Hello everyone, this is Rashak Janjala. I am an educated an academy. You can follow me on an academy learning app where you can find my other course as well. In this lecture, we are going to solve an example problem which is based on the stresses developed in the weld part of a joint when it is under bending. And please rate, review, and share the video and also subscribe to an academy YouTube channel. Here we have the example problem. A bracket is welded to the vertical column by means of two fillet welds as shown in the figure. Determine the size of the welds if the permissible shear stress in the weld is limited to 70 Newton by millimeter square. See here in this figure, here we have a vertical column and this vertical column is welded to the support, this one, by means of two fillet welds. The weld pattern is given here in this figure and also you can observe the length of the fillet weld is filled to 50 millimeters and in this figure the vertical column is under the application of an axial load of magnitude P equals to 10 kN about a distance of 100 mm from the support, right? And if you draw the free body diagram for this vertical column, you can find at the support there will be the presence of an presence of a bending, counter bending due to the axial force here and also there will be the presence of a shear load of magnitude P in this direction, right? Now we have to calculate the stresses caused at the weld part of this cantilever beam due to the application of this movement and also the shear stress caused by the axial force P equals to 10 kN. Here we have the solution. Given in the problem we have P equals to 10 kN and also the shear stress given by tau equals to 70 Newton by millimeter square. So this is the limiting shear stress, limiting total shear stress that should be maintained in the weld, right? So we have to calculate the maximum shear stress in the weld and it will be the vector sum of the primary shear stress due to the shear load acting at the weld pad and also the secondary shear stress due to the bending acting at the weld part of this cantilever beam or the vertical column here. So before coming to this lecture you better go through the last lecture where I have presented the calculation of the stresses at the weld part of a cantilever beam. So the primary stress can be calculated with the help of the area of the two welds, right? The area will be A equals to 2 into 50 into T, where 50 is the length of the weld and T is the, the throat of the weld, right? Therefore, for two fillet welds, we have multiplied 50 into 2 with 2, right? That's why we have got the total area of the fillet welds is given by 100 into T millimeter square. The primary shear stress can be calculated from the formula given tau equals to P by A, right? Where P is the axial load or the shear loading at the weld part of the vertical column and that will be 10 into 10 cube by 100 into T that is equals to 100 by T Newton by millimeter square. So we have calculated the primary shear stress. Now we have to calculate the secondary shear stress. So the secondary shear stress is caused by the bending stress acting on the weld part of the vertical column right so for the calculation of bending stress we have to calculate the movement of inertia or the second movement of area of the well pattern so for this well pattern we have to calculate the second movement of area along the i x x direction right so for this we have to calculate the second movement of area of, of one fillet well and we have to add then we will get the the total second movement of area of the well pattern okay so now we see i x s equals to 50 t cube by 12 plus a y square here 50 t cube by 12 is the the second movement of area of the well pattern from the centroid of that well pattern right and a y square is the a is the area of the well pad well and y is the distance of the weld from the axis chosen. Here we have chosen the x-axis, right? And it is passes through the centroid of the weld pattern. And here, this is the second movement of area about the centroid of the weld. And a y square is the, the product of area of the weld. And y is the distance from the axis to the weld to be determined. And therefore, we get 50 t cube by 12 plus 15 to t, which is the area of the one weld, and 50 is the distance from the axis to the weld, right? Then, therefore, we'll get this value in millimeter to the power of 4, right? And the dimension is very small. We can neglect the cubic value of t 
therefore therefore we will get uh, this value and also we have two wells right and this value is calculated for one well for two wells we have to sum up and we have to multiply it with two then we will get the the second moment of area of the well pattern that is equals to i and it is equals to two times of i axis that is equals to 2 into 50 cube into t that is equals to 25 2 lakh 50 thousand into t millimeter to the power of 4 right so we have found the moment of area the second moment of area of the build pattern with the help of this value we can find the second the secondary shear stress developed in the build uh, build part of the uh, vertical column here in this here in this example problem so the bending stress will be sigma b equals to mb by y by i that is equals to 10 into 10 cube into 100 into 50 by 2 lakh 50 thousand into t that is equals to 200 by t as you can observe this is very big value right so we have found this value in newton by millimeter square which is the unit for the stress so we have found sigma b and this is the bending stress in the top field so the maximum shear stress can be calculated with the help of the sum of the vector formula right here the angle between the two vectors will be 90 degrees that's why we got the value of tau equals to under root sigma b by 2 to the power of 2 plus tau 1 to the power of 2 whereas you can observe tau 1 is the primary shear stress and sigma b by 2 is the secondary shear stress so this is the bending stress right and it is axial stress for this axial stress if we draw the Mohr circle we can get the maximum shear stress is about half of this value right that is equals to sigma b by 2 that's why we have used the value of secondary shear stress that is equals to sigma by 2 to, 2 to the power of 2 here in this figure here in this formula and tau 1 is the the primary shear stress right that's why the total shear stress will be tau equals to under root 200 by 2 t square plus 100 by t square that is equals to 141.42 by t so we have calculated the the maximum shear stress in the build part of the vertical column in in this example problem so, so the sizes of the build will be the t the throat of the build and also h the leg dimensions of the fillet well right so the given permissible shear stress in the welds is 70 newton by millimeter square right therefore 141.42 by t equals to 70 so the value the limiting value of the stress the maximum stress should be equals to the limiting permissible or limiting or permissible shear stress that's why we have used 141.42 by t should be equals to 70 on solving for t which is the throat of the fillet well that is equals to 2.02 millimeters so with the help of this value we can calculate the length dimensions of the build is given by h equals to t by 0 0.707 as you can observe this value is calculated in the past few lectures about the about the discussion on the the dimensions of the fillet welds and also the stresses developed in the fillet welds okay so we have found the leg dimension h equals to t by 0 0.707 and its value will be 2.02 by 0 0.707 equals to 2.86 and it is approximated as 3 millimeters so we have found the the dimensions of the fillet welds used here in this problem where we have welded the vertical column with the support with two parallel fillet welds so these are the layer the dimensions of the fillet welds thank you